Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman and this is the Hayden Shapes Plunder. Looking at this board in a photo, you're probably thinking to yourself, it's a lot wider and maybe even a lot more mini tanker-esque than what it is in real life. So I think that's one of the things we're gonna try and show you in this video uh, and then also talk to you about as, as far as uh, the performance. When you look at this board, and I know the first time that I looked at it, like in the release sheet, I was, it was like kind of surprising that, that Hayden Shapes was releasing like a, like, a, like a mini tanker or like kind of just something that would like that had that big of a nose on it that was going to wide. But when you actually get this board in your hands, it's a lot narrower and a lot more foiled out than what it looks like in a photo. And so to kind of talk you through that, this right here is a 6.2. And uh, it's 6'2", 21 and a quarter, two and three quarters, 40.6 liters. So a 6'2", at 21 and a quarter is not, it's not all that wide. I mean, if you look at like a 6'2", uh, a puddle jumper, a 6'2", puddle jumper is like 22 and a half, probably. And so this is an inch and a quarter narrower than a, uh, than a puddle jumper. And it's also a lot, <clears throat> it's also very foiled on the rail. So from the nose, all the way through the back of the board and especially when you get behind the future flex logo when you get back here you can see how thinned out this board is and it's it's pretty aggressively thin back here as well for a board that's two and three quarters in the middle when you get to the back of the board it's it's really really thin and it's also not all that wide out the back so you got a pretty unique combination of shaping theories going on here and that it goes <clears throat> it keeps it narrow just for the the sensitivity and going rail to rail more quickly than a really wide board. Go with a flat nose rocker and wider in the nose to give it easy paddling and then also to kind of open up that sweet spot. But then go back to pretty moderate tail. It's not wide. I wouldn't say it's as pulled in as like a shortboard squash tail, but it's not it's not much wider than let's say like a uh, a step down shortboard tail would be on a squash tail. This has a little bit of a diamond in it, but it's definitely more pulled in than a gravel tail. So, so what does all this mean to you when you're surfing the board? This board is uh, very easy to paddle. It's very easy to catch waves on. Uh, compared to boards with a narrower nose, it gives it a, uh, a more open sweet spot, meaning that you don't only have to surf the board here and here. You can also surf the board from the middle or slide forward on the board, like when the when the wave um, conditions present themselves, so that you can like get up and do some trimming, or even if you want to hang five on this thing, you can. the The tail of the board makes the board a lot more maneuverable uh, and a lot turnier, a lot and a lot more pivotal of a turn than you would ever expect from a board with this wide of a nose. Um, and again, I think seeing the this wide of a nose isn't really accurate because the nose isn't really all that wide because it's not really going into a wide board. You know, if you had a, if you had a nose this shape going into a 22 and a half inch wide board, the, the nose would be really, really wide. What you're looking at is it's not a really wide nose. It's just going to a wider width more quickly in the overall length of the board. Um, it, it does make it wider, obviously, than a short board nose, but it doesn't get to be as wide as like what a 22 or 23 inch wide board would be in that nose width, if that makes sense. Looking at the, uh, the bottom of the board, uh, the bottom of the board, the very first thing that you look at is the, the fin configuration. Uh, quite like the Maurice Cole Shiva, this board has a uh, four plus one setup, so you can set it up with a single fin, you can set it up with a two plus one, so a, a smaller single fin with uh, side bites in the front. You can set it up as a quad. You can set it up as a thruster using uh, like your standard futures thruster fins in the front and then an FCS uh, performer uh, toolless fin for the center box. And then that you could create an equal thruster uh, that way. Each one of those fin configurations has its own personality and the way that the uh, the way the board surfed. I was able to surf it with with all of them actually with a with a single with the two plus one the quad and the and the thruster. The uh, with the single and the two plus one the board was I'd say with any of those configurations like you can ride the board really open sweet spot and it works well but I, I really found like the the two plus one and the single fin 
for being the best, like for getting really far forward on the board and trimming out like kind of far forward on the board. And with that bigger center fin, the further forward you stand on the board, just like a long board, the fin's not gonna come out and cause you to start spinning. But the um, going to the quad or the thruster, that gave it more of a shortboard feel uh, and allowed you to generate more speed at, out of those fins and out of, out of that fin configuration. The, uh, but I mean, the thing that really surprised me was the turning on this board. Again, because you look at it, it looks like a very easy kind of cruising kind of board. And then you get on it and it and it's totally, it's not that at all. It's just, it's actually really, really maneuverable. And it's just, I think it's the nose shape that throws people off. They're like, oh, that's like just, you know, like a cruiser. Where the, <clears throat> the maneuverability of the board, I think definitely stands out compared to what, where you would think it would be. And if you look at the, uh, there's a great video of Dylan Graves uh, surfing this board. It's a smaller one than this, and he's just absolutely annihilating it. And so then you're like, oh, okay, cool. This isn't like a cruiser board. This thing's actually really high performance. Um, comparing it to the Hayden Shapes Hypto Crypto, which is their most popular board, and probably one of the most popular boards in surfing right now, as far as the number of them that are that are out there. This board has a uh, it has a much more open sweet spot as to where you could surf the board. I would say it's got a little bit more low end than the Hypto Crypto. So if you live in a place that has softer waves, not as much punch to the wave, having that wider nose and flatter nose rocker and the ability to glide uh, statically, like without having to be pumping all the time, can be beneficial for people that are living in, a, in an average wave place. But what's cool about this board is that you're not giving up upper end potential. Like because the board isn't really all that wide and because it's, it's so foiled on the rails and pulled in in the tail, the same board that you could go out and ride like a really, you know, kind of average day on, it's still going to work in, in good surf and have a good maneuverability to it. The, uh, the Hayden Shapes Future Flex construction, it's an EPS construction with carbon reinforcement on the rails and, uh, and stringerless as well. So you, you do get a good flex in this board, like a flex and response, like you're, it gives you good spring out of the turns. A lot of people look at this white pin line and kind of wonder, wonder what's going on. This is just, you can see right here, it actually started to wear through a little bit. This is just a, a graphic pin line, just to give, the, give a little bit of definition to the rail line on it. So it's basically like an external pin line on the board. But a really good all around board uh, that you can ride in a, in a really wide range of conditions. If you have a Hipto already, this board would work a little bit better in small surf. And then this board would also allow you to play around with the different fin configurations where you can't do that with the Hipto and also different surfing styles that you can't really do as well on the Hipto and just give you a different feel of a board, but in a construction that you know you like. So it'll have that same feel underfoot that your Hipto does and the same durability that your Hipto does, but in a, in a different style of board. Uh, I'd say it's also a little bit more beginner friendly than a, than a Hipto because of the wider nose and the easy paddling and the wide open sweet spot. And it's also a little bit more open to being ridden over volumed. Um, the Hiptos really like to be ridden small, like basically as small as you can ride them. Where this board, this board at 40 and change, uh, I, I felt totally fine. Like I could go up to the 6'6 at 45 and have no problems whatsoever surfing that and still getting plunder maneuverability out of it. Where if I, if I went up to a Hipto that had 45 liters, it would be way too big and you wouldn't be able to turn it. And the difference being is that the Hipto is trying to go as short as possible and cram as much volume into a short length and so you end up getting pretty bulky rails. Where this board, it's, it's way more foiled uh, for its length. And so even though you would have that extra foam out on the edges of the board, it's, uh, it's a lot more foiled and thin. And so you're able to still get those rails into the water to turn it. And with that narrower width, that, that helps out quite a bit. So if you're looking at this board and you're thinking, why doesn't Trip have a pad on this board? Uh, on any board like this, where you're gonna be, where the board has a more wide open sweet spot, it, I actually don't put a pad on a lot of those boards. So whether it be like a Lost Lazy Boy or on this board that I'm gonna be riding as a single fin or a two plus one, where you're gonna be kind of moving all over the board. On a board like that, it's nice to not have the pad because then you're not trying to get off the pad or sliding your foot back up onto the pad. It's just an easier transition from wax to wax than it is from a pad to wax back onto a pad. So 
any of those boards with a wide open sweet spot like this, the Plunder, the Maurice Colshiva, a Lost Lazy Boy, I think a lot of times it's easier to run it without a pad um, than with a pad. So just go wax straight to the tail. It's the Hayden Shapes Plunder in Future Flex Construction. If you have any questions about this board, it's super fun, really blasting. It's, uh, again, having all those different thin configurations make it a, uh, a great board to have and play around with and, and just have a good time with all those different setups and, and uh, keep everything fresh, you know, depending on how it is in the water or how it is up in your head that day. The uh, Hayden Shaves Plunder, if you have any more questions, give us a call at the shop, 252-987-6000 or look us up online realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.